Hey you. I hear you've been trying to run a Vault Hunter server off your own PC. And if it's not going well, I'll walk you through it. But keep in mind, if you get discouraged, just take a deep breath, walk back through the steps, and you'll get it. I have faith. All right, so to start this off, we're gonna go ahead and get a fresh and correct version of Java. This mod pack is going to need a specific version and I've got that for you in the description. You're going to paste the link in the description, label it as Java, and you're going to download it. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. All this stuff is fine. You want to just keep everything as it should be. Don't change any paths, don't change anything because that's going to make your life so much easier. All right, and I can get rid of this. So next up, let's go ahead, open the web browser again, and I'll probably have a link for you down in the description, but CurseForge, Vault, Hunters, all that stuff. And I'm gonna come in here, go to Files, and I'm gonna be looking for the most recent version of the server pack. But I'm gonna just go ahead and grab this server pack. Come down here, here's server 1.12.4. Again, do the most recent one. Don't do this one specifically. I'm gonna download this. And here it is, Vault Hunters, official mod pack, all that. We're gonna right click it and extract all. So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and open the folder. And we're going to create a text file, new text document. And I'm going to call this server start. Server start. And I'm going to open it. Now in this you're going to paste. Down in the description. Your batch file. Details. Now what this is doing. Is it's pointing directly to the Java version. That you just installed. That's because you might have another version. On your system somewhere. Now this is important to note. This is the RAM that the server will use. This is telling it to use a minimum of four gigabytes, a maximum of eight gigabytes. Now you don't have to take my advice, but I definitely advise having more than 16 gigabytes of RAM in the machine if you are also playing off the machine that is running the server. Reason being, you're going to need four gigabytes of RAM base for the server. For every player connected, you're gonna to want to add an extra two. So for just yourself, you only need six. For you and one other, eight. For you and two others, 10. And you can see that this adds up very quickly. So at this time, you can go ahead and save this, but you're going to save it a very special way. Save as, you're gonna come down here, set it to all files. After that, you want to set dot bat at the end for dot bat. Now you can fully save it and you can delete the old text document. So to make sure that this type says windows batch file. And from this point, you are ready to run the server. Just going to double click server start and it will start populating that folder with any inform any extra files that it needs. Just know that at some point during this, it will very likely prompt you that something's trying to get through your firewall. You need to accept this and allow it through your firewall. And as you can see right now, preparing spawn area and server is starting. So your server is fully launched right now. Okay, so next up is probably the more tricky part for most people. So we're going to go to our CMD command prompt IP config slash all scroll up to the very top. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to go to control panel and from here, we're going to go to network and internet network and sharing center 
change adapter settings here on the left and find whichever one you're using ethernet properties and you're going to be looking for this right here internet protocol version 4 ipv4 in the parentheses and you're going to go to properties so here's what it probably looks like for you now what you want to do is tick this use the following ip address and now you're going to bring this window close so that you can basically copy and paste this stuff in here default gateway it's right here you're going to take this you're going to copy it and you're going to paste it in here now for the ip address i would take whatever this is and you're going to paste it into this box after that take the last section of numbers delete them and just add a random number like between 20 and 255 just to make sure it's something that's not used by your network subnet mask you can just click this and it'll auto populate it preferred dns server come here to dns servers take this copy it and paste it in here it might not be populated for you but it was for me because i've already done this so port forward come here to default gateway once again and grab this right here and you're going to open up your web browser one more time now this portion is most definitely going to be different for every person so i'm going to paste this in it's going to ask for a username and password now my default is is admin and password However, that is almost definitely not the case for you. Now, it's actually likely that the password and username are both on the label for your modem. So I would check there first. But if not, it is going to take some extra steps. So option one, you can contact your internet service provider and ask them what the username and password is. However, to do this, you're going to need someone with their name on the account to be present or else they can't speak with you about account details. Option two is you would find the make and model of the router and you would search basically the internet to try to find the username and password. I'm gonna go ahead and log in now. What you are looking for now is port forwarding. However, it's more than likely in an advanced section. For mine, it's in another advanced section, but not necessarily for you. You should probably look up your router. There is actually a great website that I will link down below to be able to see exactly how to port forward from your specific router. Okay, so here I have port forwarding, port triggering, and I'm going to add a new one. So let me go back into CMD, IP config, and IPv4 address. Here is my new updated IPv4 address. And I'm going to paste that right in here. Sorry if you're not able to see it. Okay, so after this, here's what's important. Somewhere you should be able to input a port, Vault Hunters is 25569. Please don't change this. After that, you are done. So now you can go ahead and launch Minecraft. Next, we need to get an IP that others will be able to use to connect. We're going to go to our web browser and search, what is my IP address? Thank you, Google. Add server. Paste it in and colon 25569. So this is what we're giving to our friends that want to connect to us. And they will be able to connect, as you can see. So this is the very last step. 
you're going to come into your console in your for your server and you're going to type whitelist and then you're going to do add and then a name i already added myself so it's going to tell me i'm already in the whitelist and you can do whitelist off alternatively if you just want anyone with the ip to join so those are all the steps to installing a vault hunter server if you still need help then i or hopefully someone far more qualified can help you out in the comments if this helps you then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more vault hunter videos